Sing it with me. I wanna rock with the dudes. The fear is no excuse. So baby, tell me what you say. Hey, hey, everybody. Hi. This is Five Minute Mondays, Paving the Way, and Trash Talk All in One. So, Paving the Way podcast with your host, Medusa. M A D U S A, made in the USA. I have been waiting for this guest for a long time. She's beautiful. She's talented. She has amazing history. And I'm going to ask her some questions because the more research I did on this woman, I was like blown away. Not only is she beautiful and talented, but she is like uber goober smart. And I really want to dig into that um, and find out, you know, her reasoning on a few decision makings. And, um, of course I want to introduce, um, my, uh, producer here first. Let's, um, let's a, uh, Marsh. Okay. Famous, welcoming, jovial personality. My awesome producer. Bring in the heat. Marshy Marsh and the Marsh Bunch. 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 Hey, how's it going? (laughs) Yeah. I remember you saying, cause I giggled cause I listened to our own podcast once it's up and whatever. Right. And so I just loved when you said last time. It just really gives me warm feelings because my friend used to call me Marshy Marsh and the Marsh Bunch. But it just oh, yeah, reminds yeah. me of the Brady Bunch. I don't know why. Not the Funky get... Bunch? What's the Funky Bunch? Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Oh, that. Yeah, that too, I guess. But I'm more, I'm a little older than you, so I'm like a Brady Bunch. But Marky Mark and the Mark Bunch, I guess, and Funky Bunch. Yeah. And Bunch of Crunch was a cereal. There's a whole bunch of options. Okay, you are an option. Yes, <laughs> click. Okay, <laughs> with that option, I probably should. Um, we have an amazing guest, and I would love to introduce this woman. She is, um, as far as I'm concerned, she should be, and she is going to be a WWE Hall of Famer someday. For sure. She is, um, uh, I think, gosh, she's held the title more than seven times. WWE um, superstar, uh, TNA knockout uh, superstar, and um, a woman with just a huge history, and I cannot wait to dig into this. And I know you have a few questions, so when you know you're ready, just kind of bump yourself up there, and I know you've got those questions. Once we get to that area, Marshy. So what I'd like to do now is introduce Lisa Marie. I hope I say her last name correctly. Varon. Yay! Yay, you got it right. Did I? Yeah, a lot of people do Varone, and I'm like, I'm too lazy to correct them anymore. But it's Varon. It's very boring. Karen. No. Karen. Yeah, just it's normal. It's just, yeah, but people add that little accent on the end, but it's not that fancy. So <clears throat> Varon is what nationality? Well, that was my main, my married name. Okay. And I started the business with the last name Varen. Um, my ma- my maiden name my name maiden name is Sol S O L E, and that's mm-hmm. my dad's Puerto Rican. And um, but Varen is like a Sephardic Jewish Turkish, uh, yeah, Middle East last name. Wow, yes. that is so cool. Yes. So yeah. I know in the past you and I we would throw things at each other about Hanukkah and 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 you know live the. You know, around Christmas, Hanukkah time. So I, that's why I wanted to ask you about the last name, Varen, and what your real name, last name, maiden name was. So yeah. that's very, very interesting. Um, so you I kept never changed you- it. When I, when I got divorced, I was just like, I was already advertised as Varen. I was like, I'm just going to keep my last name. And like, you know. It's a pain in the ass, isn't it, to change yeah, everything? Yeah. yeah. Forget oh. it. Just talking about divorce being a pain in the ass. I'm not going to go through the paperwork of changing my last name back to normal. Well, normal. thank you. maiden. Well, thank God. Maybe you've only been divorced once. I've been divorced a few times, so at least I commit, though. (laughs) Hey, they were good marriages. They were fun. I thought it was, you know, you you, you hook up with the dude, you get along, you fall in love, he asks you to marry him, you say, okay. What's the problem? I'm one and done. It's it's very easy to get married just like that, but the divorce process is not fun. Oh, it's just horrible. But anyway, yes. But Okay, thank you for the last name. Not not to say that I'm not in love with David. 
Lubeck, you know. I know oh, he, yes, but. but I, yeah, but I'm not, you know, it's it's a piece of paper. I, he's never been married, so I'm sure it means more to him, but I've been through it. So it's more sentimental to him than myself. Yes, I have a girlfriend that um, her man has never, ever been married. And he was, I think it was 55 when he finally got married, his first marriage. And I was like, holy crap. And it, I mean, it, it worked out. That was just by choice. He was, it was very, he was very choosy. And, and when he hooked up with my girlfriend, I mean, she was married three times. He didn't give a crap. It was just, you know, when she was ready because she was kind of, you know, a little shy after being married three times and, you know, oh, but boy. yeah, but anyway, it's working out great. Good. Um, it's, he's, he's American and she's Canadian. So, and he even left America to go live with her in Canada, believe it or not. I was like, yeah. well, no, that's commitment. Like that's yeah. whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. But I love Canada. It's a big I melting love. pot. Everyone's so nice there. They you know? are. Do you do a lot of signings there? I have two of them coming up. One in Chatham, Canada, and another one in Ontario, Cal which I don't know. I just write it on my paper calendar and then I wait for my right get the flyer to go. <laughs> okay, this is where I'm gonna be at. Yeah. Oh my God. We'll get into that. Okay. So, you know, when I did some history, I got some notes here. Um, you know, we can sit here and talk about wrestling. That's great. But I, I'm going to, you know, you and I, we go by a few names. We, 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 we spoke about our last names. Okay. Whatever. But we, we've been called different names when wrestling, if it's Victoria or Tara or Lisa or whatever. Um, I'm going to get into that whole wrestling story. Uh, scene here because it's very um, convoluted. Um, not yours, but just wrestling in general. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I went all the way back into your, not so much childhood, but your senior days. And I found that you were um, associated with the cheerleader association or something. And then you cheerleaded for the 1989 Pro Bowl. Yeah, in Hawaii. Lisa oh. Maria, that is freaking awesome. Tell me this how. Tell me that story. Okay, um, in our cheerleading, um, I cheered since like almost sixth grade and on. And um, our, our cheerleading wasn't just like, oh, let's go cheer for the sports. We were very competitive. Um, yeah. Like gymnastics were required. Um, and we did like a lot of competitions. And we would go to a camp called NCA, which is National Cheerleading Association. And it was at UCLA or different other colleges. And you would go to this cheer camp and like, learn new routines, um, new jumps, uh, you know. It was all about. It was, Athletics. It was about, yes. yes, yes. And then there was um, like an All-American Cheerleader Award at, every, at the end of every camp. And I came in. <laughs> um, I knew I was up for it. I came in, I think, with 10 or 12 back handsprings. Which Holy is, crap. Yeah. Oh, no, it got slower. It goes boom, 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 <laughs> boom. And then I did my routine, um, and I got awarded the All-American Cheerleader uh, Award and then um, was sent to Hawaii. with my. Oh, with, my God. My mom came with me, and we cheered at the halftime um, Super Bowl. I'm not um, – I'm sorry, Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. Yeah, yeah. So that was – it's, it's exciting, It was just, but it was so intimidating because they're from all the camps. So there's, like – you mean from girls from all over the United okay. States? All yeah, everywhere, everywhere. Just um, and we were all like trying to learn the routine for the halftime with six hundred girls or five. I don't remember how many people were there. I'll be honest with you, and it was so intimidating. You know, just like you know, drop dead gorgeous, popular Barbie doll kind of. Yeah, but least you were there, man. You were that whole. You were that whole package. You. I mean, you are a beautiful woman, Thanks. but. I mean, back then, I'm sure you were like that full package that they wanted. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been I, chosen, my dear. I worked hard. I worked hard. We, yes. took our, we took that sport a little bit serious. Like, you know, the tryouts were you have hives. Um, uh, it's 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 brutal. It's it wears. It's just like wrestling insecurities. You know, everything. Yes. Possible. But because of cheerleading and because um performing in school for routine, the pep rallies and all that kind of stuff. It kind of prepared me for WWE and fitness competitions. The other, yes. I'm going to get to that. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. I'm, I'm still digging deep. Oh yeah. yeah I'm digging deep. Like from cheerleading, you're, you're, you're a ham. You're, you know, you're representing the school, um, being, you know, 
being so proud of where you came from and that kind of stuff and um, prepared me for believe the it or future. Not, wrestling. Yeah. You, um, for, so after the Pro Bowl though, you, during, so you were 19 at this time. Have you, you've already graduated high school during yes. this? Yeah. Okay. So w high school to college, do you went to the U University of? I went to Loma Linda University, La Sierra. That was a private college. Um, and I went to UCLA. My first year was um, local college, um, RCC, Riverside Community College. Yeah. And then, um, went to the private college because I wanted, to, I was pre-med and I wanted to get into this college called Loma Linda University. Yes, that's so fantastic. Cool. Did you yeah. get your, you got your bachelor's in? I or? did not. No, I did not. After UCLA, I was my first time living, like, okay, at Loma Linda University, you have to live on campus. It was an all-girl dorm, very strict, no no makeup, no jewelry. The shorts had to go um, to your knees. <laughs> um, and there, there was Seventh-day Adventist, okay? So, and oh. I'm not Seventh-day Adventist, but I wanted to go to school to get my foot into the medical school. You know what I mean? Yes. But that was so, that was such a trying time because if you're not Seventh-day Adventist, um, you're not part of the clique that they grew up in. You know what I mean? They all went to SDA schools and um, I was an outcast. I went to public school. Um, you know, I would, it was, it was really hard to transition. And I was like going, hmm. living there and being kind of isolated and like, just kind of looked at, at like, you know, I'm not SDA. So I was kind of a little bit of an outcast. And um, uh, my roommate, she was from Hawaii and she wasn't Seventh-day Adventist either. And, um, but that, that pressure, like, the girl on my floor, I, I forgot her name. I just had it a couple minutes ago. Um, she used to hypnotize herself to go to sleep. Oh, my it's gosh. Competitive school. Their parents were either nurses, dentistry, doctors. I mean, so this school, like, these kids are just raised to go. You're, you're expected to go to medical school. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yes. Like, I mean... Like, yeah. Gosh, medical school, but Lisa. That's cool. Your that's brain. Cool. Look at the yeah. brain on Lisa. That is so fantastic. In this school, it was like um, the first quarter of biology, we're, we're peeing in a cup and testing our own urine. Second yes. quarter of biology, we're working on cadavers. So the money uh, for a private school is well worth it because the education level, I was like, no wonder people get into the medical school they choose after this college because you're already prepped. Um, oh with, my gosh with background you know what i mean yeah and my brilliant idea i was like dad i go i'm just i'm alone at school this is not a college education i mean experience for me is to be making friends and like going oh i can't come home for the weekend because i have things going on with my friends i was the one that came home every weekend because i was like i want to have family dinner and um i transferred to ucla lived oh my god apartment. lisa so you've been a California girl your whole life, basically? I, yeah, basically. I mean, yeah. besides yeah. until we start talking <laughs> until, about Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, until I got married. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But um, went to UCLA and I was like living on my own first time. Convertible Jeep, like my own apartment, a fraternity row. My grades started slacking and I just told my dad, I go, I need a break from school. I go, um, this. I was too young to go move out and get my own apartment. I'll be honest with you because I was like shiny lights. I was like, you know, I have three older brothers, so I was like, not, you know, I had freedom growing up, but it was like, this was too much freedom. You know what I mean? For Oh my kids. God, Lisa. Yeah. 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 And so I asked to come back home and was a cocktail waitress at Bobby McGee's that I don't know. It's, it, yeah. So you were physically training, like weight training during this time. You've always been fit or did you no. go into that next? No, 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 no. I wasn't fit. I was skinny, very skinny. Okay. I was one of those girls that people people thought I was anorexic because my metabolism was just off the charts. And I was mm -hmm. very, couldn't sit still kind of kid. Mm. You know what I mean? Yes, and I do. Of I wasn't, um, I wasn't diagnosed with ADHD. We didn't have that back then. I, I'm sure I was ADHD. And, um, but came back to live at home, you know, of course you want to work. So I got a job cocktail waitressing. And that's when I met my ex-husband there. He was a bouncer and he wanted to open up, a gym wow. in Redlands, California. And he, go, and he, we started dating and he goes, Hey, how you ever thought about teaching aerobics? You're perfect for that. And I go, well, I'm not certified. Started teaching aerobics. He said aerobics, you know, back step aerobics back then. 
you know. Yes, I remember the yeah, 80s yeah, with the yeah, socks yeah. up to our knees. Woo. And in the thong, in the thong onesie. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that was the days. And um, he was like, you know, teaching aerobics is not is really bad on your joints, just doing that. So I started lifting weights. My body changed drastically, um, drastically. And in So you're state, about, how old were you then, about? 20s? 21. Yeah, your body was young enough to where when you started lifting weights and then you started lifting heavy, you were already programming your body. So we have yeah. muscle memory, girl, and it stuck with you all the from, way through. From gymnastics yeah. and cheerleading. We were all yes. I was known as a base because I had thick quads and I was same a, here. A girl, yeah. you know? And um um okay, so okay, started lifting. Okay, then I entered a bodybuilding competition and it was I was middleweight. I was really shredded. I wasn't big or anything like that. I was just really defined. Um, I won that competition and that's when I saw Fitness America on um, TV. You did. Oh, okay. So you were training with your ex and stuff and he kind of guided you through everything. Okay. The work, the, the, the lifting. And then I would go to another gym, not the one we owned. Um, because, you know, when you're working out, when you own a gym. So you like, married him when you were 21? No, I was 24. We were engaged, though, at 22. Like Okay. Yeah. So you were with him for a while. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, started competing um, in fitness competitions. Actually, no, no, no. Okay. I did a bodybuilding competition, okay? Then his buddy named Rob Noose, I remember this guy's name, he (laughs) worked at Eye and Tissue Bank, removing corneas, heart, saphenous vein, bone, uh, middle ear um, for transplantation. And I said, Hey, I still had an idea. I wanted to go to medical school at that time. Yeah, and I, still yeah. wanted, I didn't want to give it up. I was still young. And uh, he goes, well, we're hiring. And I sent in my resume. I went to go get an interview. And then, Oh, you went to Loma Linda university, La Sierra. Oh, impressive. To to start, not UCLA, the La Sierra, the private school. They were like, Hey, do you want to start today? Um, go put some scrubs on. Um, we actually have a donor and I started that day and I think I'm going to, yeah. Okay. And then, um, I got addicted to working out from cutting through too young of people passing away because, you know, dieting wasn't a thing. Yes. You know, it was like, remember it was just like really bad dieting, you know, back in the day. And yes. um, I got addicted to working out and, that's when I started competing in fitness competitions and took it serious. I was one of those addicts. And um, so you were in the gym, you found yourself. So how did you find your way? Like, did your husband help you though? So you knew what to work on. You knew what worked, you knew what to eat in the right, correct diet. Cause back then it was all protein powder that gave you gas. And then you ate tons of chicken with no bread. I mean, it was just so basic. It was the, ba- the, the main Remember cyber genetics? With yes. The line of supplements. Yeah. The, he was the one that was like, you need to eat protein, that kind of stuff. And I still was learning him and I were both like, you know, he did way more protein. I did and stuff like that. But, um, after the eye and tissue bank, he was like, Oh, I would, you know, I, I think we sold the, um, or closed down the gym. And I, and he goes, and I go, man, I would love to live in Chicago. And he goes, you want to move to Chicago? Mm. And, we moved to Chicago and I was working at just the eye bank. They had, they had the separate, it was an eye and tissue bank. It was the, you know, Chicago eye, eye bank. And then they had the, the other or, it, organ, yes, organ. organ. Mm-hmm. And I um, worked there. Um, still was doing personal training. Um, we don't, oh my gosh. So um, you went into, when did you have your first IFBB? Was that in Chicago then later? Oh, um, no. Okay. So we, Chicago, I was still a, a muscle head. And um, he opened a restaurant in restaurant. Like from World Gyms. What um, made him go from, what made you guys go from He was from always Ellen? a mufflehead. He was always like a meathead. Like but gym that's gym what gym made gym him gym. want to go to Chicago? No, me. I said, let's go to Chicago. And he goes, okay, I'm done with California. Let's go. Why Chicago? Why did you pick and Chicago? He was born and raised in Chicago. Okay. In the suburbs. Right. And um, I said, well, if I'm going to go to Chicago, I don't, I want to live downtown. I don't want to do the suburban thing. I'm a city girl. I like to be where everything's going on, the big buildings and all that kind of stuff. And, um, oh my gosh. Okay. So I started competing in, in fitness competitions. That's where I met Tori Wilson, Trish Stratus, 
all, Monica Brandt, all these people. Is that, that before was, Chicago? No, in Chicago. Okay, in Chicago. So you made yes. the move yes. and, and you moving. first moved there. You didn't open up a restaurant right away. No, no, that okay. took a little bit. And um, okay. I don't even know how many years I was there. So this is, to be honest with you, I need this, this is why you need to write a diary because you don't remember crap. Especially being a wrestler, you don't remember shit. Oh, isn't right? that the truth and, um, sometimes? Yeah. But um, I remember. So you get there, you get there, yeah. you get acclimated to the situation. You guys are yeah. feeling things out. You're a big bodybuilder type of. Going, and then. I did fitness competitions. I went to Miami to enter a fitness competition, NPC show. Um, and I said, oh my God, we need to move to Miami. This, everyone's <laughs> in a health and fitness there. Like you just, <laughs> people just eat, breathe, and sleep the gym. Mm. And. We ended up moving there. You and did? I, yeah. Um, closed. We sold the the restaurant there. It was in um, Naple, uh, Naperville. Uh, I was there. I, do you remember oh, come, me coming to your restaurant one time? In that was Chicago. That was on um, the Square Circle, though, right? Yes. Yeah. No, that's that, a one. that was a different restaurant. We've owned okay. in our career. Okay. And um, <laughs> sorry. We moved, we moved to Miami. I see Debbie Kruk is having an NPC show and it um, allows you to become pro, to go to the pro, like try out to be an IFB pro. I did her show. I qualified. It was my first NPC fitness and I was sponsored by Perilla Performance at the time. And um, I qualified and I got ready. I didn't even take a break. Went to New York in Tribeca area, competed for IFBB um, pro. I got my first my, my pro card and I was I guess they were telling us you're the fastest person to turn pro and I go wow because when I was telling the girls or what do you expect to get out of this um, competition I go well I expect yeah. to get my pro card and they're like oh we've been trying for five years and I was like bad thing to tell people that's been trying it's just like telling people you got how you got into wrestling business oh, you know with an accident right. and you're like yep. you know people have dreamt of this and yes um, I got my pro card and I was happy and content with that. Um, they wanted me to, like, they wanted to sponsor me, like, you know, the, the Mannions. And they were saying I needed to tighten up certain things in my body. And I was like, at that time, you know, we're, we're still representing health and fitness on the stage, but you're about to pass out. Like, you're so depleted of carbs, water, all Do you stuff. remember like, how to do those diets? It was- like, give, give, us, give us an idea what you had to do to prep for a diet like uh, that. Um, it was high, high protein, um, yep. no yep. energy. You had, a, you had a carb deplete at the end and yes. your, um, proteins, fats, and carbs. Now I was only allowed to have carbs after my workout. And because I was, I was coming from not competing for a long time and trying to make up from getting shredded really fast, which is not healthy. Shoot. You're not supposed to get shredded. And that's hard on the whole and body. Was, oh, and mentality. I would come home crying. Um, oh. like, what the hell am I doing? Um, when I was, when I was trying to get my pro card, I hired a girl that I went out to go help her compete as yes. a roommate. To, um, I used to personal train. So, um, yeah. I had her do the, um, come back at, with me and babysit me. So I don't sneak out and go to the vending machines and eat. And I was, <laughs> looking, I, I was looking at all these girls. I go, I am not in this, this shape. These girls are way more pro than I am. And I almost flew back home. But anyways, oh. it turned out really well. It, it, it went great. But I, when they said, hey, do you want to compete at the pro level of IFBB? And I was like, if it's worse than this, I just said, you know what? I got my pro card. I'm pro for life. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, Lisa, yeah. you've accomplished something so amazing. A Please. lot, Lisa. I people know. don't even, I don't even know. This is great because... I don't even know if people realize how much a person really is as a whole person than just a pro wrestler, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. they just see pro wrestling and they're just like that. And it's Fairhead. like Fairhead. nothing else. Nothing yeah. Else, that nothing's going on except rocks. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I just think it's so important to bring out this other side and hear it from the person themselves and tell the story and the, and the feelings and the, you know, the ups and downs and adversities yeah. and, you know, the, yeah. you know, overcoming it all. Um, well, we wanted I, to open a restaurant in Miami, Medusa, and then, you know, you have to be bilingual. You know, Miami's very Latin culture. My ex-husband wasn't, you know, Cuban or Puerto Rican, and um, we ended up moving back to, we went through Chicago again, and then went, ended up back in L.A. I was personal training, and I met China at the In house. L.A.? 
in LA at Crunch yeah. Gym on, in West Hollywood. And they charged her to come in, but I was like, you charge her to come in? But we had members like Fabio was there. Everybody was an actor. Oh so they were God. like, we, don't, we charge everybody for a guest pass. So we took a hip hop class together. I went up to her, I go, oh, I have a couple friends that do the same thing you do. Um, Trish Stratus, um, Tori Wilson. And um, she goes, oh my gosh, are you a wrestler? You have a good look for it. And I go, I think I can do what RVD do, does and Ray Mysterio because I was a gymnast. Yes. Not knowing crap about the business. She goes, well, you have a good look in, for it. So I sent my stuff in, spent $600 on a VHS tape um, to be for the tryout video. Yeah. So, sent it in, sent my eight by tens, you know, cause I'm, there are pictures from muscle mag, muscle development, because that comes with fitness territory. You know, they say, this is exposure. You, meanwhile, they want you to do a photo shoot for free. Where is all that stuff now, Lise? I, <laughs> I have no idea. In I black, in, do you, did you get to keep any? I think my mom and dad might have most of the stuff. I'll be honest with you. Okay. I, I don't, I don't really, you know, obviously I don't have anything wrestling related in my home. So like, right. in storage, but, um, Sent my stuff in um, a month later, got a call from Ke Kevin Kelly. And he says, JR opened your package. He's never seen such a professional package put together as a trial. Um, I spent $600 on this VHS though. VHS. VHS, you know, yes. You're surrounded by editors. You're surrounded by people that can make you look good and stuff like that. And <laughs> I said, well, what do you see me doing? I'm obviously not a Tori Wilson or a Trish. I'm a little bit of a bigger girl. And mm -hmm. they said, we see you wrestling. And they're like, we're coming out to Staples. We would like to meet you. So I was like, oh, my goodness. Okay. So I got off the phone. And I don't think it was Google at the time, but I got on the computer and put Pro Wrestling School. And UPW came up. Then oh, I wow. Said, then I called them. I said, hey, WWF wants to meet me in 30 days. I need, need to learn how to wrestle in 30 days, which is yeah. impossible, right? But Who, you know, who was running that back then? Uh, Rick Bassman. Um, God, there were so many names there, though. Chris, Christopher Daniels. John Cena. Um, so a lot of them that are big um, stars today Samoa came out Joe. of there. Yeah, they they were there. And Jerry Lynn, like all these big names. Oh, wow. There. Yeah, but I came in, you know, not knowing crap and mm -hmm. had my ass handed to me. Um, but they created a role called HBIC, Head Bitch in Charge. And I was like a Stacey Keebler, Miss Hancock. Like I was a glasses and a skirt and stuff like that. And then I took a first bump the hard way in. And then I yeah. went to wrestling school and was still waiting for them to come and see me. Um, they didn't have anything for me, but I still kept on going to wrestling school. And the Godfather Ho, Godfather was looking for a permanent host, two girls. And so that was my foot in the door. I met his wife and she was. Did he my, come to that school too or something? No, or how did no. He we went to, when they came in town, they flew us out for the Godfather thing um, and met with Godfather and his wife and we got the okay and that was where the, that was my foot in the door but i was still mean i know but how did godfather get a hold of you like to do that what? um uh bruce pritchard was the head back then so we guess we were looking for permanent hosts oh, okay. because they were getting them from strip clubs oh well so some okay. of them they're not the greatest like you're <laughs> going to go in a whole junk town they're not going to be you want oh. real hoes? Not I'm not saying hoes are from strip clubs, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, do you want no, a real ho or do you want to? Not like model, like not models, but you know, <laughs> sexy and, and look good in a two piece. Do you know yeah, what I mean? And they can take a bump and throw a punch. <laughs> Maybe not even. No, you just we just escorted him out. Oh. Just, what turned me into full fit fledge was Godfather is going to be turning on the girls, us two. Which he needs to throw one of you through a table. I got thrown through a table. Took me off TV. I was in wrestling school. Oh, Lord. For, yeah, yeah, permanently. Well, wow. oh, but I got God. Paid. I got paid, not much, but it right. was like the minor leagues, but I got paid to train. And um, Jerry Lawler was telling the office, you need to move her to Memphis. And I talked to them. I said, you know, Jerry Lawler's told me I, I, I need to move to Memphis. And they're like, oh, are you willing to move? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, yeah, I want to do more in the ring, not, you know, I don't want to be the sidekick anymore. And um, they had a meeting about me and Kevin said, Kevin Kelly pulled me aside. He goes, how fast you can get to Memphis? And I go, when do you need me there by? He goes, in a week. So my ex-husband and I lost our first and last month rent um, and just packed the U-Haul, moved to Memphis. 
out of Chicago again or LA. Oh, LA, LA, LA. Yes, yes. Dear yes. Lord. So this husband here is not the same husband that you opened up the restaurant yes, in Chicago? Yes, yes, oh, this yes, is the same. same yeah, we even the same 20, one in Miami. Yes, we were married 21 years. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. 20, yeah, God yeah. bless you. I know. But I didn't. I was one of those people that did not believe in divorce, even though through thick and right? thin. My dad was in the Air Force. My mom and dad were married um, ever since up to when she passed away. And I was oh, like, well, that's, that's how it is. It's like, you, right. know, like, you can have, you know, we grew apart in wrestling. Um, yeah, but you take the vow. I was so just like, well, I don't. There's no such thing as divorce, you know that kind of thing. I was so adamant about that. But we should have divorced a long time ago. But he yeah. stuck with me. He stuck by my side. Well, you go through you go through adversities. You go through ups and downs, and then you find your middle medium, and then you work it out, and then and then and then and then and then. But yeah. I, I I praise the people that you know tried to work it out or does work it out or you know even if. That. We were on the road for four days a week. And then when you come home, the person gets the shit under the stick. I don't want to talk. I don't want to do anything. I yep. want to stay home. I got to pack for the next weekend. Yes. And they don't get the bright and shiny me with makeup and being on and like entertaining and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's the poor people at home have to suffer the, this. But um, yes. every time my contract came up, you know, you know, even though I was traveling a lot, I go, maybe I'm not going to do wrestling because it's it's dividing my ex-husband and myself but every every time my contract he goes you're so good at it i don't want you to resent me you oh you, you, you need to you need to you need to you need to do this still so, right yeah. so lisa when you first got into wwe what was that your first that was your first real big job right i mean yeah. you got you got hired as the whole basically yeah. went but to school contract i had a contract when i how, how long was your contract then what the year was it thing was a year and then after i went through the table and then um became like when i got brought up um, 2002. Um, I mean, you were your first big show was WrestleMania, wasn't it? No, no, no. It was um, against Jackie Moore, and then I was getting um, prepped for Trish, an angle with Trish. And um, once <laughs> I was like on for a while, for a couple months, Johnny Ace comes up to you and say, "Hey, congratulations! You're full time. Here's a three year contract. Um, and by the way, you pay for your own hotel and you pay for your own rental cars now." That was the the step up, you know, because when you're under developmental, yes, you take care of your hotel and rental cars back then. Right. Once you become full time, you're independent contractor. So I became full time. Holy and, shit! Yeah, and um, yeah, uh, it was. What year know, was that then? When you got that first big contract? I should know this. I don't even know. Um, two thousand. It, it was probably two thousand two. Yeah, because that's when I started like full fledged wrestling and, yeah and so your main roster was um Jackie who was on top at that who was on the top at that point at that point uh, china? china yeah china um terry reynolds ivory lita oh gosh Trish. Uh, yeah and um the other tory um yeah. or i so was that the attitude error or is that the end attitude, of the attitude? At the end, the end of it. Yes. That was so right at the attitude error. I'm more, we call it the golden era because it was right after it. I'm the golden era. I'm way before you. You're the new world wrestling. <laughs> is that what it is? No. No, no. I don't know what it is. I don't know, but you are far from golden, honey. <laughs> you're, the OMG. you're the, you're the platinum. <laughs> oh yeah! Uh, oh fuck no! You know what I am? I am the sneakers, the silver sneakers. <laughs> I'm the silver sneakers era. That's the, it. The silver plated, not even the full. <laughs> full, 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 full <laughs> and it's probably fake sil fake yeah. silver anyway. So yeah, whatever the hell. Oh my god, that's pretty like, good. Mission like what like our lives bring us to. You Do know, what? Like, like what opportunities cross your paths and and. What you think you're going to be as a kid doesn't really happen, and you know. Oh. And I was the one that I have three older brothers. You know what I mean? And I was like, "Oh, let me try this. Let me try this." My parents were like, you're, "What's this wrestling thing?" And I go, "Oh, you know me. Three months, I'm gonna be bored. Next thing, I'm gonna do the next thing." And I swear to God, yeah. we're sisters from another mother. So you were getting out of wrestling. I mean, you were getting into wrestling right when I was retiring. Yes. 
Holy crap. Yes. yes. And this was when the WCW and the WWF wars. And, yeah. and they were just 1999. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, 99, 2000, 2001, Ooh, I what, left. What, what triggered the idea, maybe I can do this? Tori was signed with WCW at the time, just yep. walking the guys to the ring. And I went backstage with her in L.A. And we were roommates at one point. And um, I go, you get paid to walk a guy out to the ring? And I go, pass my name along. And she was yes. trying to get to WCW, but it was. Oh, she got paid good. When she came on board, Tori got paid really good. Yeah. I think they were paying all the wrestlers at that time. And that's why they were overpaying a lot of people. And it was like, yeah. And then um, she was like, they're not hiring it right now. I think the financial stuff. Yeah, because they peaked out <laughs> with exactly. everybody. But well, they didn't peak her, out. They did not peak out on my contract. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but because of her bringing me backstage, I was like, oh, I think I can do this. Damn straight. Oh, good. Good for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, it, so, an easy world. it sounds very easy. Like what I described, what I've done. It was, you know. Man, the wrestling school, it's nine to five. It's like it's every single day. Yeah, but you're you don't you don't stop learning from nine to five. You're always learning, even if you're watching a match or if you're walking dudes out to the ring or if you're watching VHS tapes or yeah. if you're watching YouTube nowadays. I, those are the best ways to learn is to always go back and look yeah. at all of your all and of this your is what work. I also recommend to people too is like, you know, I, I manage Stevie Richards and uh, I think being a manager and watching from the sidelines, like yes. so up close. On a house show versus a TV, to yes. learn a different way. Being the manager on the side and watching all this and what makes people tick, you learn from that. Not just getting thrown in the ring. If they would have threw me in the ring right, right away, I wouldn't have been Victoria. I would have crumbled. They would probably let me go within a year. Well, see, and I think that has ruined some of you know some great people that could have been really good. You know, they throw them in there too young, and it just. <laughs> Yeah. Either they get hurt or it messes up their mind and their career, and then they can never get their timing right. And then they've yeah. already been like this cloud over them, like they've effed up already. You They're know what I mean? On TV, and it's not their fault. They're getting thrown in. So yes. you can't like say, I'm like, well, she wasn't really great. And I was like, well, they didn't give her a chance to train. I'm like, she, they, they loved her look. They just threw it on TV. But mm -hmm. I think my longevity in WWE, since I was so green and I was, um, when I got, you know, when I was backstage, you know, it wasn't open arms, like, you know, I no. worked my way up there, you know, and when the, when I, when the new girls came in and I, even if they lasted a Who week. Who were the I, new girls after you, after that well, main roster you already said? So like, that's like when the Diva the Search girls. Like Diva starts like coming in. Barbie, like Kelly Kelly. Oh, um, shit. Oh my God, yeah. all these new kids. And um, I was like, hey, who are you driving with? Because Ivory came up to us hoes and say, do you want me to drive with you? And teach you the ropes like we didn't know to go to the gym when to eat before at what time we had to get the building yep. then what do we do when we get to the building like do you know what i mean we didn't know that was nice of ivory yeah and ever to, because of her i knew i was never going to treat somebody um like a stranger backstage because you are going backstage in a foreign world and people staring at you like what are you doing here or you know are, are you and you're too scared to even say hi to anybody and um i was you know, I was always like, hey, I know you want to make her a million bucks. Give her to me. I'll, I'll make an ass out of myself. I'll butt my ass and um, make her a superstar. So you know? your superstar person was China at the time and Trish as well. But Trish, was Trish still going strong with you? She and who else? Doing, um, in the, she was starting to do wrestling. Um, just Because she, she wasn't even, she hasn't even started then. No, she did. She did. She was there before me. So what Before, year was that? 2002, I believe. Okay, I think she yeah, was just... It, I think, you know, like, and also back in those days, um, people would hear... Because she bell. came from a fitness background like you did. Absolutely. And she was yeah. also pre-med. Oh, my God, you're kidding me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's freaking yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, but she's been born and raised, like, wrestling. Because she's Canadian. Okay? Yes. And yeah. um, she, I, you know, in the early days, people would hear the buzz, like, they heard how... Fast, I was picking up wrestling and how I was getting it, you know, and the people would watch your tapes going. And Trish was the one going, hey, when are you guys bring a Victoria up, I would love to have an angle with her. And that was, that's how I started 
That so like, somebody would call and say like, or tell the higher ups, Hey, I want to angle with her. And then it would happen. I don't know how, what she did, but no, not her. I'm not just saying her in, in, in general. I, I I'm just saying I her. Um, I would, you know, when they were local wrestling, I mean like when they were in town, yeah, we would go backstage. Okay. And then we would grapple and then show the agents where we're at and stuff like that. And I remember her whispering to Fit Finley, when is she going to be brought up? I go, and you know, I was giant and she's so, tiny i can make her look like a great baby face and yeah you know a couple times i got you know then i got the call to come up and then they changed their mind and i go back home and then <laughs> finally it stuck and right I was there and I was, where was mickey james in this wasn't she there she got hired a um, couple years later so it was okay because you so had you guys had some great things so later you were more i i viewed you as what I saw of you, I thought you were an amazing character. Uh, you were very strong. Um, you you were an individual, and I, I love that. It wasn't like you were trying to find your place into someone else's character or yeah. try to. You were your own individual, Lisa. Well, and I, well, I just well, there's keep in mind, Medusa, that um, Fit Finley was in charge of a lot of our characters, so he would watch us wrestle, um, grapple with each other, right, and watch yeah. the sidelines um, yeah. or just in, in in the ring and go man, you really, you wrestle very psychotically. And I go, oh, well, Memphis style is very over-exaggerated. So I was very exaggerated and make sure the last row, because we're not always televised, could see yeah. what I'm doing. And so that's how I got the psychotic character. Fit was like, you need to make her psycho. You know what I mean? And so right. Fit was wow. like, you know, really jazz. So jazz you won your first championship during, during your first, you're kind of your first stint then, right? Isn't it yeah. with... Who was that with? Um, um, against Trish in Madison Square Garden. 2002. Oh, so oh my God. I'm sorry. I started wrestling in 2000. Yep. I, you know, I don't understand how people remember every single date. I'm not one of those people that remember like where everything took place. Yes. But Madison to... Square Garden, was it, it was the old Madison Square Garden? Yes. The old one. See, same here. And people say, what is your most... What was your best or most legendary place or the, you know, whatever. And I always say, I guess it would have to be, you know, the Tokyo Dome against Bullet oh, Kano awesome because too. we sold out the yeah. Tokyo Dome and then Madison Square Garden because it's his, I mean, Historical. history, man. Yeah, yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So then you went on to, um, um, then the other girls started coming yeah. in. Yeah. Um, I then the first. That. You had yeah. your jazzes, your Molly Hollies. Did they come yep. in then? Molly Holly, yeah. We had a, a WrestleMania, WrestleMania 20. I shaved her head. Um, oh, Jesus. Jazz came in. And I was in wrestling school at OVW with Jazz. Um, after Memphis, I moved to o Ohio Valley. Because Memphis right. closed down. And then I was, every everybody at o OVW, Batista, Brock Lesnar, John Cena. Oh, shit. Eugene, Rob Conway, Shelton Benjamin. I mean, everyone at this school made it. it and randy orton was there like that was the classes i was in and so like ovw was, was huge it has yeah, a i mean it Cornette, landmark it, yes and um um okay oh yeah jazz was in my my, my school so was charmel charmel was in my class too but jazz is the one that took me under her I, I used to train charmel in wcw oh yeah <laughs> she and this is my thing on charmel Charmel's got to be the, one of the sweetest women I ever. Know. And um, so when she was in WCW, it, it was her, fun? it was, it was Charmel, Tori Wilson, uh, Stacy Keebler. Um, I don't know, a couple others, Molly Holly. And they're like, they didn't know what to do with me. Cause I didn't like the way or what they were doing with women. I said, you know what, just, you know, bring me down to the power plant, whatever. So they yeah, threw yeah. me down there started training the girls and the you know and this is when poor tori and stacy didn't know jack right uh -huh. and they're like what is a summer song? you know yes. these girls were trying and me i was like you know so fucking hard on them i'd be like run the ropes get it la, 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 you know yeah and do this and do that and keep going and the one that had like she should have been wrestling was charmel yeah she like holy that. crap yeah. she was a natural yeah yeah she picked Why it up she didn't there. follow through? I don't know. I it's don't know, probably storylines. You know how that works. And she also tore her ACL in OVW. Oh, she did? Yeah, that's right. That's what happened. 
Yeah. Oh, and I bet after that she's just like then Booker eh. and her start, you know, then that came about. I don't and I, I think she hooked up with uh Booker then too, or whenever yeah. whenever they got married and so you know, then yeah. She, now she has her own school and her own T V show out there. Oh, I know. What a success. Right? Good for I know you. it. Call me Queen of Carnage. I will beat your ass. This is my time. Busting doors, breaking glass ceilings. And I like to play. They used to call me a Lunder Blade, but not anymore. I am Medusa and always will be Medusa. And that's what I think of the Women's Championship belt. Oh, hey.